Hello, welcome everybody again. Um, we have a, let's say we have a problem called a no crank and no start. Or in simplified terms, the car just doesn't start, to make it simpler. In other words, let's say your instrument panel comes on. The displays and the gauges come on. So, first thing that comes to your mind is, do you have a connection to your battery? Obviously, yes, because if you didn't have a good connection to your battery, even your instrument panel, your gauges, would not even come on. Number one. Number two, is the starter or your ignition switch performing in the start position? Well, obviously, if you put it to run and you put it to start and the gauges come on and it and you hear a click or something, then obviously the switch is working, even though the rest of the circuit is not working. Now, how do we prove it? And how do we jump the relays? Okay. Now, let's say this is a starter circuit over here that we've been going through a couple of times now for honda and all these uh, uh models they have a multi-fuse two fuses common to, to um to each other so we have a terminal here <clears throat> we have a terminal that's common to another fuse but this fuse is 50 amps and this fuse is 100 amps the common line is over here terminal and the output is here so input here from the battery Coming from the battery, <clears throat> the output of the multi-fuse is the white over here, G1 over here, the wire over here. <clears throat> so again, multi-fuse, two fuses together with a common point. Now, we want to jump the relay. Before we do such a thing, we have to understand the circuit. Going away from the circuit over here, we have obviously the battery over here, okay? Now, starting from the battery of the positive terminal over here, we have 12 volts going into the multifuse. We have 12 volts coming out of the, the multifuse also at the white wire. We do not lose any voltage unless one of these are blown. If any one of these are blown, we have to change the whole thing. Now we're going into these junction connectors over here that they have so from the white wire we're continuing to a2 this is i think believe b1 b1 we're coming out a2 and we're going to the ignition switch the, at the, this point we should still have 12 volts we did not lose any voltage so 12 volts still here and still here going into the ignition switch still 12 point 12 volts we did not lose anything through the wire out of the ignition switch, still 12 volts, which is which the terminal one and the black and white striped wire. Which, so we should be at 12 volts at the output of the ignition switch. How do we prove that the ignition switch is good? Now, here's the difficulty from a viewer who said, I'll, I want to jump the relay. Well, okay. Most of the relays, the terminals, as you can see, The numbered with 87, 30, 85, 86. We come to this relay over here. We don't have those numbers. We have four, we have three, we have one, we have two. How do you associate those terminals with this relay? Okay, that we all always have. So now we ha and now comes the difficult task of trying to figure out Let's say if I have the relay over here, if I have the relay and I want to jump it, which terminals are you going to jump? Number one, you can never ever jump this one. Once you are jumping this one, if you are jumping across, if I take a jumper inside the terminals <clears throat> with the relay, I take the relay out, I put a jumper. If I go to points four and three, I'm putting zero ohms across it. What am I doing? I'm putting zero ohms across this part of the circuit and guess what that's a short circuit from positive to negative you cannot do that obviously okay that's a no-no if i want to jump something i'm going to jump this point which is two and one so this is the control side we control it current flows here you get electromagnetic field when that happens, the contacts close, which is this one, two and one. So this will be in the closed state as long as he has a magnetic field across him. Now, 
am I going to jump this one? If I'm going to jump this one, that's the best way to do it. Why? Because in this circuit, I still have some resistance going through these starter solenoids. If I go through this one, I have absolutely no resistance because I just took out the relay, the coil part of it. Okay? That means you're going to increase the current. Less resistance, more current. You're going to blow the fuses. This way, I'm still intact, and I still have some... Even though I'm jumping this, there's no resistance, no resistance. All of a sudden, I come here. No resistance. What's going to resist? What's going to give me my resistance? The coil, at least at this part. So I'm going to jump it. Fine. I'm going to jump this one to this one. It's called the load side. What will it tell me? Okay, if this is good, look at the at the trail. Follow the arrows. If this is good, here, 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 ignition switch, here, 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 and then through what solenoids, and then it will close the starter the 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 switch the contacts for the starter motor. So we know if I jump this part. Then we know at least if the if the starter is activated or engaged, then we know the multi fuses are good, both of them. We know the junction connector is good. We know the starter ignition switch is good. We know that part of this relay is good. That this is not open. We're not. We don't know about this yet, but we know that at least this part is good. We know this solenoid is good, and we know that the starter motor is good, and we know that this heavy wire that carries a lot of a lot of current through it is good otherwise how would the starter motor be activated so we know he's good he's good he's good he's good we know the ignition switch is good without even taking it out we know this part of it is good and this part of it is good and this part of it is good but we're left with is is it a relay problem is it uh park neutral safety switch problem how can we know take the take the, take the selector the gear selector and put it in neutral you have two positions you can choose you could put park which is the normal the default let's say or it could put it in neutral if it comes on in let's say in neutral we know we have a problem with the safety switch with the park neutral safety switch right it doesn't come out in both positions. Then we're dealing with other problems, obviously. So now we're left with the relay. Now, how do I know which one to jump? It's not that easy, okay? And that's why I'm going through this through this video. Like we said, this one over here are numbered di differently. Let's say I get a relay on any car. If you understand this concept, you'll understand every car. How do I know? Now, I'm going to go, this is the typical relay, okay? This is what you're looking at. This is the relay. Now, here are 86 and 85. 86 is here. 85 is here. 87 is here. 30 is here. So this is 12 volts. This is 12 volts. I'm going to jump this part. Always jump this part. So which terminals am I going to jump? I'm going to jump 87 and 30. Always these two. Always. These two, these are the two that you jump. This is the arrow to indicate. These are the two you jump. You never jump these. This is a no-no. This is the one that you jump. So which ones am I going to jump? I'm going to jump 87 and 30 regardless of the relay of anything that will tell me starter motor is working the ignition switch is good the fuses are good again and this park uh, neutral safety switch is good because i'm going through it correct what am i left with i'm left with the relay now how do i know which terminals are which on the relay okay this is the hard part okay as you can see Hopefully you can see it. I'll show you. Okay. Now, there are they are numbered, and this is hard to see, but there's 
They are numbered over here. Okay? Like I said, let me try to get... Okay, now maybe you can see a little uh, easier. Okay? 87, this one over here on the far, the far right. 86, this one, upper right. 30, upper left. And the other one, 85, lower left. There is a five terminal also relay, 87A, but that's not used. As long as it will fit, let's say I don't have this relay. I wanna make sure that it's working, right? As long as I have four terminals and it'll fit, fine. If I have five terminals on the relay, I cannot put it in a four terminal, obviously. So as long as it will fit and I know what I'm doing, I can bypass it. So here we're gonna go. Now we're gonna put this, which ones am I gonna jump? 30 to 87, let's find them. As you can see, and it's hard to see, I, I marked them in red. This one and this one, these two. Oops, these two. They are marked in red. If you look at it, okay, 87, 30. These are the ones that I'm going to jump. If it's like this, I take it, take it out. I look where it's connected, 87, 30. Now, so another one, okay? You know, the, oh, these is a little more easier to see. Okay, now. Okay, now, these are easier. 87 is this one, as you can see. 86, this one. 30 is this one. And then this one, 85. Which ones am I going to jump? I marked them in red. This one and this one. So these two. So 87 and 87 and 30. Okay, now you can see them. They're always marked. You have to take the relay flip it upside down and then you'll see the terminals okay all of them whichever again i mark these also you see the ones that are marked in red 87 87 30 these are the ones that i jump okay because it's going to tell you over here it's going to tell you over here but sometimes it's a little difficult to understand i want to jump this one 87 and 30 let's look at the last one Okay, here we go again. Here's 30. Which ones do I want to jump? 30 and 87. How do I find them? 30 and 87, this one. These upper left, lower right. These two. What's the other pins? Numeral, 86. Far right, this one. Oops. And the, the bottom left is 85. 87A is not used. So therefore, again, 3087, it's clearly marked. I marked it in red. This one and this one. I take a jumper and I put in the terminals, this one and this one. Very important. You have to know how to identify these. Okay? So at least when you jump this, again, this is the theory. I want to prove the fuses are good. I want to prove the ignition switch is good without taking it out. I want to prove the starter is good. Okay? I want to prove at least the the the, the um what do you call it? The 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 switches this switch is good and this part of the switch is good. Okay? So I'm when I'm doing this, I'm proving at least this part is good. This 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 okay so i'm not really actually proving this part not yet until i put it in neutral once i jump it starter comes on a car comes on right engine comes on right i just proved to myself i took care of him i know he works i took care of him i know he works i took care of you i know you work i took care of of you start a motor i know you work i know the solenoid works i know the all the wiring in between works i know the heavy wiring works all that by just jumping this now that's not the method that i use i always use the method of going over here and measuring if i have 12 volts if i have 12 volts over here at this point what does that tell me 
that tells me that all of this circuit is working, which I've been doing through all these videos trying to inspire the students. Always go to this point. Try not to jump the relay because I've seen too many people put it at the wrong terminals. Okay? So, therefore, if I go over here and I get 12 volts, 12 volts here, 12 volts over here, that means all of this is working. Ignition switch is good. Junction connector is good. Multi-fuse is good. Battery is good. But the starter is not working. I'm left between here and here in the starter. I would have to go to the starter. But at least I know this is working. Why do I do this method? Because sometimes you have a computer giving a ground. This is the ground going to the transmission range switch, the neutral safety switch, neutral park safety switch. So in this case, it's easy. But if I have a computer giving a ground to this, then I'm involving the computer also. And that's a little more difficult. That's why I go to this point. If I have 12 volts over here, I know the computer has activated the, the, the relay. So I hope this was helpful. Please go to the videos. Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, for auto and the other one, Motive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. You'll see me where I put actually the terminals in the, in the relays and actually measure them in circuit, which is the most important thing to do and the most accurate. I don't really recommend jumping, but the questions were asked, if you're going to do it, at least try to do it properly and hopefully i explain that if you found this informative you learned anything please subscribe